The college had a board, which Al Pietro, Anthony was on, and a few other members from, from your community board. And Doug McKee was the chairman, Judge Doug McKee. They disbanded that board. The, the college was sold to the hospital. So they didn't want no advisory board from the college. But nobody knows what the newspaper article that I read outside of Al D'Angelo, maybe Anthony and Silvio, that they know that Einstein has its own board. And I want to show you what the representatives of the people that are on the board. I have myself on the chairman, right from the Allentown community. Frankie Acovino, who was the vice president, second vice president of the Morris Park Community Association. Ben Salaj, who represents the Albanian community. Nick Conchitore represents the seniors over at the Allentown Area Association. James McQuaid represents East Tremont and Drox Neck. We have Minerva Mendez, who represents Castle Hill Community. Emily Sanchez represents Co-op City. Pat Quaranta is one of the old presidents of Morris Park Community Association. Shirley Cook represents the Van Ness Community. And David Ellerstein represents the Pummel Parkway Community. We have two vacancies right now. If anybody on this board would like to be on, the two vacancies that we're looking for is somebody from Pelham Bay and somebody from City Island. City Island, that's correct. Those two, and then we will have the whole district all taken care of. Now, I was upset when I read the article when they said this man was sleeping in a chair for three days, his socks were bad, and the other article that, that 30 seconds left, okay. But that article, I spoke to the, the newspaper reporter, he never knew there was an earth coming an advisory board, and he says from now on, look at in touch with me. If anybody needs any of these papers to find out who you represent in your community, she has a list of all of them. I want to thank you for listening to me, and I appreciate it. Bye now. Any questions? No. Thank you, sir. Move on to uh, Jean DeFrancis, Allison Merchants Association. I'm trying to enjoy my coffee. Hey, guys. Uh, so this Saturday, Rain or Shine is the food festival on Allerton, the Merchants Association, uh, as well as the Homeowners Association, and uh, a few of our elected officials. Uh, it's shaping up really nicely, and uh, we want to make sure everybody is well aware from 12 to 5 on Allerton Avenue, the street will be closed. So uh, avoid the traffic, park your car, and join us for the festivities. Um, also, I wanted to uh, touch on the business incubator that we started. I thought this was a, a common thing that many people knew about, but uh, apparently there's, uh, there's still some information about it uh, that needs to get out. So basically what we're doing is uh, we heard the complaints about not enough local mom and pop shops in the area, so we're doing something about it and we're trying to nurture and grow uh, a new variety, uh, new ideas on Allerton Avenue so we don't have the same stores. Uh, infiltrating and saturating the uh, the community. So if there's any questions regarding the uh, the incubator, feel free to reach out, and uh, you know how to reach us, alisonmerchants at gmail.com. Thank you. What? Hey, Eugene. Uh, Raphael Schweitzer, Rocks Park East Community Association. June 9th, 2017. Dear residents and families, we, the 1199 SCIU members of the former Beth Abraham, not-for-profit, now owned by Centers for Care, for-profit, would like to alert you to a pending layoff of 25% of workers, which includes mm -hmm. primary caregivers, CNAs, social workers, housekeeping, dietary workers, and unit clerks, who have given the nursing home decades of dedicated services. Our new employer, Centers for Care, has decided that profits are more important than patient care. They plan on severely reducing our staff to unsafe staffing levels, which can produce a dangerous work environment for every resident and staff member. We have given Centers for Care relief through different concessions of our contract, but that is still not enough. They want to reduce services and staff, which will negatively, negatively affect your family members for receiving the uncompromising quality of care they deserve, which can also jeopardize their safety. Mm -hmm. Please call this administrator, Moshi, 718-519-4125, and tell him to stop the layoffs. Every voice counts. 
This is from 1199 SCIU United Healthcare Workers East in regards to Beth Abraham. I'd just like to make, uh, give a big thank you to Councilmember Andy King, to the Office of Senator Jamal Bailey, um, Councilmember Richie Torres, Public Advocate Letitia James for attending the rally in front of Beth Abraham. Thank you to News 12 for covering it. I wanted to make Community Board 11 alert of the issue if they're not already alert. Hopefully Councilmember King's office can speak more about it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Raphael. Um, I have Buddha from Parkside. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, my name is Buddha from Parkside. I am a founder of an organization called I Am Parkside. It's a community-based organization mentoring kids from the age of 12 to 18, boys and girls. Uh, I made an announcement on July 15th, which is a Saturday. I agreed really to start up a, a youth basketball tournament uh, for kids 10 and under, 14 and under girls, 14 and under boys in the high school division. It's Saturday and Sunday. It ends on August the 6th. The last day of the tournament, we're having a Parkside versus police game. Uh, you guys are more than welcome to come out. Uh, I'm serving food, giving out drinks to kids, prizes, uh, shirts, t-shirts, bags. Uh, just want to make an announcement, you guys are all welcome to come out. Parkside houses. Uh, you guys are more than welcome. You guys have good evening. Um, and I did get a request for the repainting of the lines from a board member of ours, and I did give to Commissioner uh, uh, Rodriguez, and she's looking at that. Uh, Graceful Boglio, um, are, there, are you the new health care law? Good evening, everyone. I'm here on behalf of Pastor Q English. Um, on Monday, June 26th, they're having a town hall meeting with the office of the mayor, Jonathan, Jonathan Soto will be there, and I believe the Children's Defense Fund will be there. It's at six o'clock at the Bronx Christian Fellowship Church on Gun Hill Road. I don't have flyers, this was a last minute announcement, uh, so if you need information, I can get it for you. If you want my number, let me know. I'll give you my number. And uh, but it's it's going it's concerning the new health care law that is going to be passed. So they want to discuss the ramifications of what may or may not happen to people on um, with the health care. So questions. Thank you, Grace. Francis Colado, New York Public Library. You said it wrong. His representative uh, is going to be there now. Hey. Good evening, everybody. Um, I want to first start by thanking the Education Committee that twice has met with us and, and extended an invitation for us to come and speak tonight. Um, and I want to introduce myself, Michael Winter, as a proposed school leader of a new charter school within the community. And I want to share with you why I'm here uh, and what excites me about the work that we're going to provide for the community. Every 26 seconds, a child in this country drops out of school before graduating high school. The number one reason that they give, the, the students themselves who drop out, for dropping out of school before they graduate high school, is they don't perceive themselves to have the literacy skills necessary to compete on the college level. Pathways for Learning Charter School is going to be a charter school that we start in kindergarten and first grade and grow through fifth grade. And then in the third year of development, we're also going to apply to open up a middle school for the community. <laughs> And our primary objective is going to turn back the clock, close that achievement gap, so that our children know that college is not only a possibility, but it's an expectation. We're gonna do that by targeting children with language-based learning disabilities and providing an exceptional program where they can get the reading skills necessary to compete in high school and college. A second feature that I'd like to share with you and, and for members of the community, of what's so important to us, we're interested in opening up a community charter school, which means families and children 
are going to have an unprecedented level of choice from the moment they enter the door. Our, our children are going to be choosing educational options or modules at partner sites so that they can apply what they're learning in the classroom in the field. One of our partners is New York Botanical Gardens. Our children will be taking the theory that they learn in the classroom, they'll be going to get their hands dirty, uh, and they're going to be able to uh, complete modules to make sure that they can transfer their knowledge from the classroom uh, into the field. We're exceptionally excited about this work, and we appreciate the time. I have a question. Yes. Uh, so, I see the whole, Al had one first, and then we'll go to Andrea. Yeah, you mentioned. You mentioned twice about the help you're going to be to our community. The charter schools don't draw from the community. Mm -hmm. They draw from the Bronx. That's right. So how are you helping our community if you're bringing people from outside mm -hmm. in when our children in the community need schools? That's okay. right. So I'm going to speak to that to the best that I can. Um, charter schools by law have to operate by lottery. Uh, however, you can say that uh, when, when children or families no. enter their children in a lottery, priority is given to children within the school district. Um, we don't really have control over that piece, but we do have control over where we ask to be located, okay? And we do have control over the type of community school that we provide, which means what are the, what are the steps and the actions that we take that entice people from the neighborhood to want to attend our school? One of the things that's very important for us to say is we, we, our school will be open every second the school is open and will be open not only to students, but also to families and siblings of students. Mm -hmm. I don't want to cut you short, but the problem is that we have many charter schools in our community. Mm -hmm. We have children in our community wishing to go to those schools and they can't get in. Mm -hmm. Sure, and that's one of the reasons. What we're doing is they're taking students from outside the community, mm -hmm. we are being driven in, and our own students and that's something that we heard at the education committee and the, the commitment that we cannot change the, we cannot change the law but what we can do is make sure that we target your community when we're uh, rallying people to sign up for our lottery process so we will have a specific focus for this community in order to do our best to make sure that the majority of applicants come from the, from from your very community. We can't prevent others from joining and we can't change the law, but we can do our best to um, make sure we advertise and make sure we pull children in, uh, primarily focusing our efforts on your children within your community. Uh, well, the process right now, we're actually in the application process with the New York State Ed Department. Yes. We'd be hoping to open in September 2018. Okay. Members of our education community come in and take a look at the... Uh, I would love all of you, all, when, when we are established, I would like an open door policy for all of you to come mm -hmm. to visit our school. All right, Andrea? If I, if I'm asking something that you said you so the, the school is intended to be uh, in school district 11 uh, and where we are also asked, where? well there is no specifics yet that's some because that's part of the process that you go through you have to work with the New York State uh, New York City Department of Education and the New York State Department of Education we're not at that step in the process what, what, what yet locations are you looking at well, that's, that's something, one of the things that we are focusing on is, one of the things that was shared to us about the community is that over the course of the last several decades, a number of parochial schools have closed, and therefore many of our children have had to go outside of the community for their education. So we'll be looking and talking to the parochial schools to see if there's a school within the community uh, that has space available for rent. So they're gonna co-locate. That's, mm -mm. Uh, on location, no. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Brian Adams, Brian Precinct Council. Come in, come in. NG. Come in, come in, come in. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing? Um, it's about um, um, the four proposed um, Renton North Railroad stations around here. By 2019, 2020 is going to be sweet. Um, four proposed um, railroad stations have been in our East Bronx area: Hoop City, Bronchester, 
INS and Bullets Point. Um, I can't wait for this. Um, I can't wait for this in two, about two years. Um, is it in the planning stages or um, is, it, is it going to um, be, um, be um, ribbon cutting soon? No, there's no ribbon cutting anytime soon. So, it's a great question, though, for us. Okay, okay, right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Francis Wild on the library, no? Okay. Our gathering session is over. We will turn it over. We have uh, the Fortnite precinct here. Who wants to say a few words?
he was caught as a collective effort of, of people like yourselves who care about the community, and he was also caught like as a collective effort of cooperation from local people within in their stores. Unrelated, uh, allowing us the ability to step into their homes and allowing us the ability to to uh, interface with them in a way that is inviting. Uh, so we. We did have a uh, we did have a shooting, uh, which we, we really have no um, information, uh, further information other than the facts uh, from the initial from the initial crime scene, and that shooting occurred on what, on White Plains Road, sorry, on Pelham Parkway South and Bronx, uh, adjacent to the Pelham Parkway North. I apologize, and Bronxwood, uh, adjacent to the Pelham. I just want to showcase some of the good work that we're doing. So we have, uh, I, brought with, I brought with me several, uh, you're going to see more coming in. I want to showcase them because uh, we do have cops that are really dedicated to this community. Um, you're going to meet uh, members of the Bronx, uh, of the 49 Precinct Conditions Team, and I brought with me members of the 49 Precinct Housing Conditions Team. And they focus their efforts on community relations, enforcement, and quality of life of the three housing developments that encompass the four nineers. The 80,000 residents uh, that we serve in public housing uh, really benefit from this team composed of one sergeant and eight police officers. Uh, so I brought with me Officer Varela and her boss, Sergeant, sergeant Joe Cardona, with me today. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things that they've done. But our, our, while you, you know, while the, the residents and their guests at this precinct are sleeping, I have people on the midnights. Uh, they come in and they work all night while everybody's sleeping. And what they're doing is, is tremendous work. Uh, we had a we had a gun arrest. All right, Officer Almonte from our midnight crime locked up four people that had an illegal firearm in the car. Uh, about a week later, he targeted another. Uh, another one of our very, very big problems, uh, car breakers, and he arrested somebody for auto stripping, taking side view mirrors off a of car. <laughs> All right, we had uh, oh, wow. Officer Crespo make two burglary arrests, which is one of the crimes that are driving our crime spread. Again, Officer Kaiser, he made two arrests again for a different, at this time it was actually a female perpetrator of auto stripping, uh, so which is a, which is a bizarre event. Uh, and, and we're really, we're really drilling down with your help, your tips, your 311 calls, uh, and and all of your cooperation by way of the community. So I, I want to say before I sort of hand it off here uh, that that you know as a special ops lieutenant here, I really appreciate uh, the community. I really appreciate your cooperation, uh, and I think without you, the 49 precinct would not be the success that it is. Amen. I just want to thank the 4-9, a perfect example of community and policing working together. There was a, a person exposing themselves on the other side of the parkway <laughs> last week. Uh, someone took pictures of the car and the gentleman in the car, and I believe two days later, <clears throat> they made an arrest. So again, I thank the 4-9, and community involvement does help the police. Okay. Edith? Um, I just want to say thank you, whoever's responsible for our bicycle patrol officers. Um, as far as I'm concerned, we have 49 is the best. All right, but you're right, without us, it wouldn't be that good. But anyway, I noticed that these patrol officers actually stop in the street and they talk to the people. And it's very important to have a good relationship. So again, thank you for that. We need some more. Definitely. Uh, yeah, no, Edith, thank you. Uh, again, you know, you've been a mainstay here for, for as long as I can remember. And, okay. and uh, I'm not, not going to say how long you've been here. However, uh, you've been here longer than I've been alive. Uh, uh, just joking. <laughs> Nicholson says good things about you, so I have to. No, so even, even, listen, even myself, I was a bike cop many, many years ago. And you might even see me out there a couple of times. Uh, you know, I, I take it personal. I think that it is a real uh, way to 
not hide behind the barriers of a police car uh, and get out of the face of the public. So yes, you know, the last couple of weeks now there's warm weather, you, you know, and not too humid. Uh, you did see me out there, I'm sure. So we take that. That is, you know, probably going to be the last one of our programs to go because of its success. standing here doesn't mean people won't steal your car. So take your keys out, all right? Take them into the ATM when you get back to your car because those that's how we're getting our GLS. That's how we're getting our grand larceny autos to, um, you know, to this end. So the guys, to answer your question, you know, brother, the guys are in the right place, they're in the right time. Uh, they're taking these arrests uh, and, and we're trying to target the bad guys as best we can. No problem. Okay, uh, Keyshawn, I want to say, I'm Pelham Goggins. I went up and crying. All right, listen, I want to say thank you to Captain Alps, to you and your, uh, and I, I asked for some presence here, but then he sent, he sent half the precinct to me. But uh, I, I, I got to say thank you for coming, letting people know what we're doing, you're doing rather, and we appreciate it every minute. Thank you. I made a mistake, I forgot to call. Um, we have somebody from the sanitation department to speak uh, in the gallery. Um, Andrew, we're going to be organic for it. Make you step the mic. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Andrew Coyles. I'm the uh, senior manager for Organics Outreach, and I'm here tonight to um, explain that uh, Community Board 11 is going to be um, provided with Organics Collection Service beginning in August of this, uh, this year. Um, the Department of Sanitation is currently expanding its curbside organic service throughout the city. By right. 2018, all New Yorkers will have this uh, option for um, organics, basically food scraps, food soap, paper, and yard waste, like leaves, um, grass clippings, things like that. And we, what the agency does is we turn this material into compost and renewable energy. Um, so what we are going to be doing is sending a mailer to all um, households um, in Community Board 11. Um, which explains basically what can and can't go inside of the bin. Um, when you can expect to receive your brown bin, it's basically a, a brown rodent proof bin with a latching lid. Um, the purpose of this bin is to containerize the, the putrescible waste, the food scraps, you know, food soap, paper, yard waste, things like that. We find that if you keep this material inside of a container, it will prevent rodents and raccoons, um, rats, things like that from tearing open those uh, bags that would be normally laying on the curb and causing a mess. Um, additionally, we, we provide a little kitchen container or a smaller kitchen bin that's for indoors. Uh, in addition to that, some educational material, 
um, which I've also set out on, on top of the table in the back when you came in and signed in for the today's meeting. There's plenty of educational material. Please go uh, grab some of that materials, flyers, and, and things like that. Um, since we are expanding this program, it is actually during the month of July, we're going to expand to uh, Bronx 11 and 10 at the exact same time. So we will take one full month to deliver the bins. So if you receive your bin in July, service won't actually start until August on your recycling day. Okay. Um, again, there's the flyers and information at the table in the back. Yes? Hi. You use the word option. Is it our option whether we want to do this or not? Let's say we live in an apartment. I can't imagine putting another bin into my kitchen. Okay, yeah, this is a voluntary program. It is voluntary. Um, you know, we do definitely ask for people to participate. If you do live in a building with 10 or more units, you have to uh, apply online for the bin by going to nyc.gov slash organics, and that's how you can find out how to get a brown bin delivered to your apartment. It's, you're completely eligible, but you have to apply for it if you live in a building with more than 10 units. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to the elected officials. We have Romina Enea from Council Member Torres' office. Hello, everyone. I don't really have announcements, but I did want to let you guys know that um, it is re-election year in the council. So if you don't hear from our office, it's because there is a blackout period where we can't send e-newsletters, um, you know, things about events like that. So if you want to stay updated with the office, please call or visit our social media page, Facebook, Twitter. Um, the office phone number is 718-842-8100. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Adam Ramirez, Councilmember King's office. Hey guys, not much to say. Um, we are having a big community engagement day on August 5th. Before the event, which is going to be held at Evander Childs High School, we're going to be having a, um, a parade going down East Gunville Road. It's going to start around the width over by Holy Rosary and near East Chester Road. Uh, it's going to be much, much longer than uh, uh, our inaugural parade last year, which started around uh, Boston Road. So uh, a good you know, chunk of that, uh, you know, going past Junior's house, going past a couple of other folks I know uh, in Newport 11. Um, you know, so we'd love for you to come out. It is right on, on the border, but um, you know, we're all we're all one community. Um, Raphael mentioned, you know, our participation in the uh, the rally in uh, not much of a march, a rally uh, the other day at the Beth Abraham site. Um, you know, I want to thank also Office of Councilman Torres, which I mean, that's, that's your district. It's, a couple, you know, it's, it's uh, about a half mile from where our district line is over there, as well as Senator Bailey and um, a number of community residents that came out um, to support uh, these, these workers. I think we can all agree that just hearing that overnight 120 jobs from our community are just gone uh, is something that we should have concern no, especially when we're talking about health care, when we're talking about reducing such a large amount of the workforce in a facility that provides care, obviously, you know, that one one question, are you are you going to be reducing the quality of care there at a facility in our community with uh, folks who work in our community? Um, so I don't have any specific details, um, but it is something I think that uh, our office and a lot of folks are going to be um, watching closely, and we shall be, you know, keeping our eyes open about it. So thanks very much. I have flyers from the for the community engagement event um, outside. If you have any questions, feel free to see you later. Thank you. Uh, Mike, Mike, please, Marcy. Adam. Yes, Marcy. <laughs> you know how I take health care very seriously. I know you do. Why didn't you let me know about all these problems? We have Joe, myself, we have the committee meeting. So This was very overnight. I mean, we you know, heard about this, it was very overnight. This is, you know, they, they let these folks know about it a week before, and it was sort of an overnight rally. But, you know, there's uh, things going going forward. Uh, you know, we'll definitely let you guys know. Uh, we have one participant, like I said, it's not our district, but we just, uh, we felt, you know, we had interest. Great. Thank you, Adam. Gina, sir, in Klein's office. Hello everyone, I hope everyone's having a nice day. I actually don't have any announcements for today. 
But I just wanted to let everyone know that we are still having our summer concerts in August. We don't know who's going to be playing as of yet, but we're generating a calendar. And once I have that, I'll make sure I'll, I'll make sure we'll email blast it to everyone, and so that everyone will be aware of these events coming up, most likely in August. But uh, that's it. Thank you. The bands. I know at least 15 bands for the whole indie opera. Mm -hmm. Whatever it takes. Can you make suggestions? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce the last name. Ibrahim from uh, some members of the Hello, everybody. How are you today? Uh, I don't have too much to report either. At the end of May, we had a successful mammogram. Uh, last Friday, we had a successful job fair, our third. Uh, we used to celebrate Father's Day all last week with different uh, senior citizen facilities in the area. And, uh, that's about it. I don't have much else to say. Questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So then, uh, well, actually, I forgot Tom King. Uh, Tom, you want to say a few words for our president's office? Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Just a couple of uh, quick announcements. One is to um, congratulate those board members who received their reappointment letters uh, over the last week or so. Um, we thank you for your service and we look forward to continuing uh, working with you. Uh, the board will receive its list of new board members over the next week or so um, so that they can begin their service uh, probably right after July 1st. And there are just two other quick announcements. One is that <clears throat> early in June, the borough president participated in a groundbreaking uh, ceremony for York Studios. Now, York Studios is building a on a 10 acre lot in community board number nine um, and it's be will become a 350,000 square foot uh, media production uh, studios with back lots and uh, sound stages for TV and movie production it's uh, will be a companion almost to the silver cup studios which is opened also in the hunt point section uh, these are well-paying jobs these are uh, opportunities for people in the borough to uh, participate in, in television and, and movie, movie production. It's a $100 million development in the borough, and it's something that uh, the borough president is, is, is very pleased is occurring. Uh, I just have one other note. Uh, tomorrow <clears throat> at the uh, Rotunda, there is a recruitment day for uh, new careers, uh, job career day uh, from 10 to 1. At the um, Grand Concourse, I'll put these flyers in the back. You can take them out the meeting, uh, beginning at 10 and going until uh, 1 p.m. at the Rotunda of the Courthouse. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Bernadette, Mike. Hi, Tom. Um, the production studio, when is that going to start? When is that going to finish? Is there a timeline? Um, Produ um, excuse me, uh, construction just started, I think. Groundbreaking was only in uh, early June, so I would anticipate 18 months at least of construction before where it starts. Okay, what, uh, street, start. what street is that a community board nine? It what? is, uh, it's off the Bruckner Expressway. It's where, I forgot what was there before, to be honest with you. No, 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 no. I forgot, I'll get you a bit more exact location. Right, I'll Google it, I just thought you had that information. No. Thank you. We'll move on to um, Treasurer's report. Can tell you? Thank you. Thank you. The Treasurer's report has been distributed. Do you have any questions? Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This will be the last um, live streaming until further notice because 
This is provided courtesy of Councilmember Baca's office. I did ask WNET for a quote. I still have not received that yet in terms of if another elected official or someone else would like to fill the bill. And then also people have asked about the reconstruction of uh, Pell Parkway, the interior road space. We do have uh, the Bronx Arts Commissioner here today. And when I reached out to her about it recently, she, you know, she was there last week. There is active work going on. It's just not every day necessarily. The contract is until March 2018. So that's going to maybe last a little. The unsightliness might last a little while. I know we are working on speeding things up. Let's see, I got an email from PS108. They wanted leniency with parking tickets, which is kind of ironic, ironic or coincidental since in the past they've requested um, strict enforcement. Also, the health committee, they're looking at having their health fair um, next year at the Bronx House. And the Bronx House previously requested the committee to provide some type of insurance for them. That I was informed earlier today that that is no longer being required or requested. It looks like the committee um, will be covered under the Bronx House policy. And then, as some of you know, in consultation with at least one or two other board members, Fox Times ran a story about 706 Lighting, the supermarket there. Um, obviously, that's not the end of the story. But the DCA did go issue violations for that. I will be reaching out to the landlord. Um, and hopefully, we'll get some type of resolution, permanent resolution for that issue. Speed cameras, still no update on. There was a request in April or March for speed cameras on Morris Park Avenue between William Street Road and Morris Park, uh, White Plains Road. And um, the biggest thing, you know, you can't just put speed cameras anywhere. They got to be within 300 feet of the school. And I put on my DM report on page two, uh, part of what the fact sheet is in terms of the school zone and whatnot, the timing. So in terms of the, the uh, Yonatan Netanyahu Grand Memorial that was moved to uh, Wallace from Holland, so Parks did, you know, I did ask for a confirmation on why um, that was, why that happened again. So the path was removed at Holland as a deterrent to pedestrians crossing the park at unsafe locations. Because there's no, there's no nice path right now, right, to get onto Collin Parkway at Holland. You have to go down to uh, Wallace for the white. That's a hardship. So the issue really now is getting the uh, memorial sign moved, which may be a local law that needs to be amended. You, at least as in recent times, you need a local law to make a memorial sign. So I'm, re I'm working with Councilman Baca's office to do that. Like a what? To change that. It was there already. Um, Ridiculous. Let's see, in terms of my last e district service cabinet meeting, there are quite a few issues the agenda is posted online. Remember, if you have issues that are not being addressed, and please let me right, know right away. So it may not get on the agenda right away, but it will get on there eventually. So if anything else, please speak to me after the meeting. So now we'll move over to the chairman's report. donations to uh, the various community boards. Okay, this year our new committee uh, picked five candidates out to give this award to. I'm gonna say this here, uh, four of them are unavailable due to work, tournament, in, in one in Italy, and we, we got, we have I think uh, one of the candidates here. I'm gonna bring her up first, a pretty girl here. Ali Vanilla. I wish it was more money for you. Maybe next year we'll get more. Congratulations. You want to get with the TV? We're going to be on TV. Come on, guys. Hey. Jeremy. Come on, get us on TV. Come on. You're on. You're on, Tony. 
successful, but at least they try. That's important. So the three we, we're going to identify this year, from Sanitation, Jose Serrano. This, this guy checks into the office every day. He checks into the office. What can I do for you? And he's not here, unfortunately, but we have a plan for him. The next one I'm going to identify uh, we have a new park commissioner this year. And since she got here, she's been our best friend. Every time we, we, we call her, again, she'll, she'll solve the problem or she'll, she'll look into it and get back to us with the results. But I want to say this here, she's been getting a, a lot of work with this Pella Parkway, you know, a lot of abuse. And it's not her fault. It's this, these contractors, you know. They don't Different move until contractors. they get their money. You know, they go in stages. So, but that Pell Parkway is going to get done one of these days. And, and from what I see now, it's going to look beautiful. They started, I think, on the lower end. She was cracking the whip last week over there. <laughs> but I want to bring up Iris. Iris, well deserved. service and commitment to the welfare of our district, our community. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the next one, she, she, she deserves this, she does. All these years, uh, I've been on this for about, I don't know, eight, since 08, and uh, I've known this young lady, and she she always did the right thing, DEP. And she gets a lot of noise from us, she does. But she, she always has an answer. She gets back the same, you know, within the same day with an answer. And I want to identify her. Effie Artizone, would you please come up? Community Board 11 will like to thank the EP Bronx Borough Coordinator, FBR The Zone, for her dedicated service and commitment to the welfare of our district, June 22nd, 2017. And I need this, Effie. Iris, I need it too for you too. And I want to say thank you guys, all right? Let me serve you. <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, first, I want to say something. Uh, as all of us know, we lost a good friend in our community, Will Madonna. Madonna? Madonna, okay. I always call him Will Madonna. It's not the little Irish twist there, but Will was at all our meetings. He was all at the association meetings. Everyone. He was always there for us. And he always had some good news to give us and some bad news. And uh, we're going to miss him. We're going to all we'll miss him. And uh, the, the way it went, I was with him that Thursday evening, and we were having a nice time, me and him. Next thing I know, Saturday morning, he passed on. He went to heaven. That guy died to go to heaven, all the work he did. He was a, he was a great man. Our community's going to miss him. We're going to try to do something, get get something named after him in our community. Um, we're going to work on it, okay? And hopefully uh, the city council will think about maybe naming the street after him. Mm. Let's look around for one, okay? We have one already in mind. We'll try it. So, okay. But let's, let's not forget it. He was a good friend of everybody. Thank you on that. Uh, we have our carnival. Every year we have a cut. That, that Iris, thank you very much. We have two more days this year. The Iris, thanks. But the, our carnival is in the same place. What do they call that over there? Bronx Park. Commerce Mall. Commerce Mall. Bronx Park East. Commerce Mall. We had it starting on August 15th. It goes to the 28th of August. Okay. Wow. It's a it's a, it's a nice thing. We never have no trouble. We like a little more attendance. Last year we got, it was, I think, a lot of rain last year, right? Yeah, we got hurt last year. This year it's going to be good weather. Uh, and finally, uh, Pelham Parkway North Reconstruction. Listen, all I can tell you there is maybe they're going to start in the summer. Maybe. 2019. No, I, I really don't know. It, 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 the guess is maybe this summer they'll start. Yeah. I'd rather they That's just I leave told. it. I understand the contracts were signed. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the winner. We got the winner. Get it. Right. Just leave it alone. Don't work you're, on you're it. Right. And you want to know something? We're paying for the repaving. We're paying for the repaving. From 30, 40 million, it's up to 119 million. That same piece of Wow. Right? And, we, and they're going to repave what they did. So I says, yeah, 119 million. I would do it too. But anyway, that, that's about it. I could say right now, nothing really that great except for giving the plaques out and the Yankee Awards out. That was my honor and my pleasure. And I wanted to now turn this over to, who's up that next? Thank you. So if you, if you can hand it back to, to Don, Tony. All right. And then. Don, it's all yours. So then we go on to he did. He did it already. Yeah, I know. I know. We're going to go to Sandy. That mic is for that to stand. So, yes, we did. Why well, you guys? Tony. So, Tony, did you just hand the mic to? So, Don has a mic. So, in terms of committee reports, we have an election this year. So, we're going to turn it over to Veronica for the nominating committee. Who, I believe, already handed out the ballots. Her and Sandy. So. Is there anyone who did not get a ballot? Anybody did not get a ballot? Anybody paying attention? So we got three positions up. Okay, so each of you should receive three ballots. Positions that are up for nominating for our voting today are second vice chairperson. Joanne Lombino is listed on the ballot. There's also an option to write in to somebody else if you have another idea or to abstain. For treasurer, we don't have anyone listed on the ballot, but you are welcome to write in the name of the person you want to vote on for the ballot. Uh, Sergeant at Arms, we have Fano Segreda listed. Also, you can write in another person if you so wish. Well, there's no one listed on the treasurer ballot, unfortunately, because Silvio was not available to be here for the meetings, so he was not able to accept the nominations. Do the ballot, and we'll go around and collect, and everybody get it. So if you have you, we 
Please make sure you sign each ballot after you've made your vote. If you want your vote, if you want your vote to count. We're going to go on with the committee reports, okay? Who's up first? Me. Yeah, Dom, take it. This is on. Good. I'd like to break this up into two sections. Oops. Number one is renewal of liquor licenses. Uh, the first ones are a Japanese restaurant on 1948 Williams Bridge Road. It's a renewal of uh, liquor, wine, and beer. Uh, the second one is for uh, Gasolina Bar and Lounge, 2525 Boston Road. And the third one is El Nueve Sasson on 2233 Boston Road. Uh, precinct didn't really have a problem with any one of these. Uh, bottom line is uh, we'd like to make a motion of no objection. Anybody second it? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, those three pass. Now we have a new liquor license for 500 Morris Park. Uh, we had a problem with the application, and the bottom line is we waited till the next week to accept the uh, the paperwork because somebody had a death in the family and they left the country for a while and when they came back. But the bottom line is uh, we made them sign stipulations. No live music, no DJ, no jukebox. And hours of operation, they closed midnight seven days a week. They wanted to be open until two. We made them sign the stipulation that they close at midnight. Now, the one thing is that some people might object to is they do have a pool table on the thing. Uh, the committee allowed it. I would like to make a motion. We send a letter of no objection. Anybody second it? Any discussion? Where is Park? I know where. It's, it's almost by the train station. Adam Street. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, Mike, please. Thank you. I have an objection um, to this liquor license, even though they are new. That has been a problem corner. Uh, the past the past two owners. <clears throat> Excuse me, the past owner had a pool table, and what it did is it attracted not restaurant, but more lounge and hanging out um, um, the uh, clientele, which caused issues. And before that, there was a pool table in there. We had asked them to take it out because it was attracting the same kind of clientele, and they did take it out. Um, so uh, I, I, am, I have objection to this because it's doing the same thing once, twice, three mm -hmm. times, and then expecting people that we really don't know to um, care about our neighborhood as much as we do. So I really do object to that. And also they are, even though it's a 200 feet uh, next to a house of worship, it's 236 feet next to a house, close to a house of worship. But my main objection is the pool table because of what kind of clientele that it's going to attract. Okay, I'd like to respond to that. Would you like to say something? Mm -hmm. Go right ahead. Um, I also have to inject, and because when you hear sports bar, you think of uh, HBO, the fights, etc. It's going to bring in a clientele that is going to be from outside the neighborhood, which could happen in any place. But there's not a lot of sit down space in that in that place for people to sit down and have to have a sit down restaurant. Um, they would have to prove themselves to me first before I would give them the license. I'm sorry. Well if I'm not mistaken they're already open without liquor. 
number two, uh, we've discussed this with the precinct, and I have all the faith in the world in uh, our lieutenant, which I'm sure is going to be here on a regular basis like he is in all of the other drinking establishments. Uh, he was at the meeting. I did discuss this with him in uh, length. And the bottom line is, sometimes when you get new people, you know, you actually have to give them a chance. Now, the other place was open until 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. You cut this person down three hours a day, seven days a week. I mean, there's only so many restraints you could put on something. Okay, and just the pool table seems to be the only real objection. Sometimes you just got to cut some people, you know, a little slack. Uh, down for the vote. Uh, Lieutenant would like to say one Yeah, go ahead. Just, just the people who, uh, the members of the board who, who had, you know, reservations uh, per se on this location. Again, like like uh, Dominic said, you know, we do take affirmative action against violators of the state liquor authority uh, and, and the rules and regulations. This particular place, you know, when I, when I saw it on the agenda, Oh, I had the old was a guy sitting there. operators folder pull from my office and deliver here. And you're right. I mean, this, you know, this is a stack of papers. This represents all violations from the owners that you know. You know, these 15 or 16 violations represent all the, the bad things that happen there under the old ownership. So that's why, I mean, I think that, that when they do all the mission for the big sciences under new management. And, and, you know, I have no problem giving them uh, a second chance. We are relentless when it comes to our nightlife establishments. And I can attest to that. Everybody that comes up for re you know, renewal keeps on saying how they're persecuted. And I keep on telling them, you are not the exception to the rule. You are the rule. Everybody says the same thing. He is in every establishment on a regular basis all the time so I, I just that said i'm just gonna i'm gonna you know go out on the limb here i know we're being recorded i'm gonna personally guarantee that you can cross your fingers we don't need it i'm gonna personally guarantee that this place does not become a problem in your in your neighborhood i know you live there yeah. you know so i i take that personally i have family that lives in van Ness, so i don't i don't treat that better than any other neighborhood but i know you know what it, what it means to have that, that sense of a quality of life. And I know that you had it while they were closed, and now that they're opening, um, I will ensure, and I will personally guarantee, that there will be no issues if I were the most part. And if there is, then we'll, we'll, we'll remedy them. Two questions are over already. I call for the vote, Mr. Chairman. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We have how many of them? Two. Two. Any abstentions? Verna. One. One abstention. Okay, so Verna and Andrew opposed, and then we do have the same. Passes. That's it. I'm done. Uh, Parks and Recreation, Harley Drayton. Uh, no, you have a motion on the floor. I forgot about that. I'm sorry. Good evening, everyone. Um, Parts and Rec, we had our meeting on June 7, and uh, we did not have a quorum, but we held a meeting anyway because Parks Department uh, design team came to present uh, designs for fitness equipment that's going to be installed in uh, Bronx Park in the Allerton Avenue entrance. So um, the design team gave their presentation and there was some adjustments that were made because the Bronx Park, Bronx Park East Neighborhood Alliance was there, um, Allerton Avenue Merchants Association, um, and several other guests. So they were able to um, make suggestions and recommendations even though we didn't have the quorum. I went ahead and made the decision to present to the board. We need a letter of no objection that's going to the New York City Design Association so that the designs for the park may be approved. We couldn't approve it at the committee meeting because we did not have a quorum. So I'm making a motion to um, make that done now. So does anyone want to second that? I second it. Tony, uh, 
Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any yeah. against? I just want to state that the deadline is tomorrow, so you either need to send a letter or send an email and speak to um, Iris about that because Michelle was not in. Good. Great. Thank you, Jeremy. Okay. Uh, yeah, a couple of things were brought up about that whole area, and I think that the community board in itself has to see what they have to do to get some kind of uh, park house there or you know where they have some kind of bathroom facilities and water fountains I mean you have mm -hmm. at least two or three things going three things going on over there mm -hmm. you got the skate thing the you got field. the soccer field and now you're gonna have this exercise uh, equipment they have to do something to get water into that area like water fountains and stuff like that and a park house with a, a reasonable restroom because the people in the housing across the street are complaining about a lot of uh, disgusting things happening over there. Mm -hmm. Um Don is right, but the designs did not include it because there was a, not enough money in the budget. Mm -hmm. So they're asking everyone to petition the elected officials to go into their discretionary budget. That's what I just so asked. Next time now. around, it can be it can be built. Thank you. Transportation, Daisy Rodriguez. Okay, good evening. The Transportation Committee has a motion to recommend approval of the following street exiting permits. There are nine of them, so please bear with me. First one is Narragansett Party Association Block Party on August 26th. This is taking place on Narragansett Avenue between Rylander Avenue and Lakewood Place. Second is um, a health fair on August 26th, taking place on Allenville Avenue between Allerton Avenue and Brighton Avenue. Third is a White Plains Road bid street event on August 20th. That's on White Plains Road between Wydig Avenue and Pelham Parkway South. Fourth is the East Chester Presbyterian Church Block Party on July 24th, June 24th, sorry. And that is taking place on Fish Avenue between East Gunhill Road and Burke Avenue. Next is Hone Avenue Annual Block Party. Sorry, on September 22nd. And that is taking place on Hone Avenue between Arno Avenue and Addy Avenue. Next is the Fellowship Tabernacle Ministries. It's a religious event. And that is on August 23rd taking place on East Dunhill Road between Pearsall Avenue and Throat Avenue. That is the 1900 block party. They don't have a specific name, it's just the the, uh, the address. It's an annual block party that they do. This is on Narragansett Avenue between Neal Avenue and Rylander Avenue. That is Diana's block party on August 5th. And that's on Fillmore Street between Morris Park Avenue and Van Ness Avenue. And then it is the ACTA block party on August 19th on Barker Avenue between Allerton Avenue and Brighton Street. And that's um, our very own Janice Walcott. So I'm asking, is there a second? Any discussions? Uh, so, Edith and then Bernadette. Mike, please. On the White Plains Road bid street party, is that on the sidewalk or is that, are we stopping traffic on White Plains Road? No, we're going to take uh, sidewalk. Yeah. Uh, the White Plains Road bid will take the area that's directly in front of the exports. That's as far wide as we're going to go. And we're going to take uh, uh, the street, but only the, the service room, the block and off. Yeah, the service street. Yeah. I'm just curious, we never allowed to have anything on a block or whatever because we couldn't stop traffic. Now we'll be able to stop traffic on the service road, which is going to present a lot of chaos for the traffic going down. 
Well, actually, that's not going to do that. It's only one little spot, which means that uh, they'll be parking uh, behind that. They'll be parking in front of it. And uh, we're only talking about, uh, I don't know, 25, 30 feet. No. Then you're going to love the sidewalk there. Uh, so before before we go on, Bernadette, I think Daisy's um, going to withdraw her motion because there's a point of order from the Borough President's office. We're going to vote on Joe separately since Joe is here, so Joe can recuse himself. So, yes, sound good? Okay. So, would you want to, um, I guess, make a motion? Two motions? Motion for approval to accept all the motions with the exception of the white control bid. So, second by Sandy. Where is your question pertaining to the other ones? Yeah. And Joe's. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. I have a question with regards to Diana's block party. This is new, isn't it? No, Chris, right? She's had this block party in the past. Yes. She interrupted for like two years and it started again. What? She had it before two years. No, she didn't. Yeah, she did. Okay. Yeah, I need to see that paperwork because I live right there. Okay. And I don't remember anything on Fillmore Street. Um, so I don't know what date that was. I live literally right on the corner and I would have known if something was blocked off. Is it the full block that's being blocked off, or is it a sidewalk? It's a full block. It's a full block. Okay. The last time we had something in Van Nest was with the green, with the tabernacle on Morris Park, which was a huge fiasco. Okay. I do not remember this at all. I, I don't know. I, nobody, nobody remembers so, this. So we'll, we'll confer tomorrow. Um, and also, can I point out that August fifth is also the feast, feast of Saint Dominic? So around the corner, and I just want to know, was this on last, last month's agenda? Because I don't remember seeing this, no. even though it was entered. No, okay. they, they weren't prepared to come to us at that point. So. Okay, but it was entered on April 22nd. Can I, can I make a request from the committees, um, and I think I brought this up to, um, to the chair already, that when there are certain um, things that are specific to board members, that they just shoot them an email and let them know that there's something going in your area that checked the agenda, because not all of us check our agendas all the time. Because you know, and if there was anything on Fillmore Street, I'm like, I'm a bit flabbergasted right now because there's no way I would have approved this, and I don't think anybody else would have. Fillmore is a long block, um, and we have one-way streets, and there's going to be the Feast of Saint Dominic around the corner on Unionport, Unionport Road. So I would like to basically see the previous stuff, the previous paperwork. Okay. Um, any other questions? Yeah, Chris, you want to say something? Yeah. Um, okay. Usually what happens at the transportation committee meeting, uh, we keep rules and regulations that we have formulated when it comes to not blocking the whole block. Mm -hmm. Meaning what? That I have to keep by law 15 feet from the curb. Uh, free of any uh, obstructions. So if people gotta go through, cars gotta go through, emergency gotta go through, they can go through. But there's parking on both sides? No. They cannot park over there, they're gonna get signs from the police to remove the cars. Otherwise they're gonna be torn away. Now this is actually a regulation from the mayor's office. There needs to be 15 um, foot emergency lane. And I have a petition that she has signed, I guess, so I can check it out. Yeah, well, she have signed it. Well, I'd like, to, I'd like to see the addresses of the people. Uh, Linda? If you remember, down in Venice, we've, we don't have block parties down there for a very good reason. It's true, it's a new year, things are being different, and it's the crime is down. But that is a, not a great area. And plus the fact there is no parking now because Con Ed is beside the regular parking because Con Ed is down there doing work. So you have obstructions on just about every block except for maybe three. So something like this is going to take up that whole block. Even though it's a wide block, there is a problem. We've always had religious things down there, like the tabernacle or whatever, but we've never had block parties. I've been on this board a long time. Yeah. In order to satisfy different areas, I recommend that we 
when these meetings occur, we alert the people that get affected by this to attend these meetings. Thank you. Because, because we have the address. A notice of who wants to have a party. Mm -hmm. And we know which association it affects. I know it's a little uh, extra work, but it's worth the time. That's it. Uh, Let's any, move on. Any other discussion? In the meantime, no, sorry, Andrew. In the meantime, since a number of people are objecting, why don't we vote on that one separately? Can I make a motion to? Remove that one? Yeah. You want to withdraw the motion and then make another one? Yeah. Okay. Yes, that is the motion. All right. So, so Daisy's withdrawing the motion. So, your new motion is? My new motion is that we vote on this as a block with the removal of Diana's block party and also the White Plains Road. Correct. So, who seconds? Brano? Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Against? Abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Unanimous. Next motion? So, the motion, the next motion would be to uh, approve the White Plains Road on the street party. Second by Edith. All in favor? Aye. Any? Um, Yes? One abstention? Okay. So, motion carries. So, there's 28 who proceed over 20 motions. Okay. Thank you, Sandy. You're welcome. Okay. And the third motion is to, to table Diana's Black Party. Well, you don't have to. You don't, well, the, the, the committee did vote on this, so. Okay, you so should motion bring it. To, okay, so motion to recommend approval. On Diana's Black Party. Do I have a second? The motion on the floor is recommend approval of Diana's Black Party. Is there a second? I second. Frano? Open for discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? So let's do. Let's, I really hate this, but not, not people raise their hands, so. In, in order to prevent roll call and then waste of time, just take the hands that are voting now. Right, we know that you're at 20 yeah. Thank you. You got it. <laughs> okay, so once again, who's in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, majority in favor, right? Again. No. So Linda, Bernadette, Kenny, Andrea, Tony. Abstentions. One. So, hold on. Shrano, uh, uh, Edith, Laurel, Al, anyone else? So then the majority carries. So, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, land use, John McManus. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the land use didn't have a official meeting, but on June 15th, we uh, had a town hall meeting and with, in conjunction with Assemblyman Sepulveda, the Morris Park Community Association, Van Ness Alliance, and Community Board 11 Land Use Committee, we had a developer from 500-508 Van Ness present at Einstein his new, uh, his new plans for that uh, project. I'd just like to thank Einstein, uh, Anthony Vitaliano, and Chair, and Jerry Mo Jeremy Warnicke for getting the space. It was perfect. They had a screen there so they could put up their uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation. Uh, on the follow-up to that, I did email the Morris Park Community Association and the NS Alliance to say that to follow their follow-up, if they'd like to, is to uh, vote on the project again because they're on record as being against it. The land use committee is not going to take, take up the issue if the both community groups are on record voting against it. So I got an email today just a few minutes ago from the developer Sachs wanted to know what was happening. He said nobody responded to the email I sent out. So I just let, I thought I'd bring it up and just for information. Uh, on uh, June 29th, the meeting was canceled. 
It doesn't say why the meeting was canceled because the developer cannot make the meeting. Uh, they can't meet with us till after July 10th. And uh, just uh, Brian Adams brought up something about the train stations. Yes. The really board has just at the last meeting sent a letter in an email form to city planning and uh, to study all the areas and the streets around those <coughs> train possible train stations. Now I was on the phone myself, Jeremy, and uh, the phone from city planning, and the guy from city planning was very happy that the community board was interested in looking at that as a, as a complete rezoning. So I would suggest, again, the other, any community groups that are around those train stations, take a serious look at that and see what they would like to do, because once those things hit, and I think right after this Tapazi Bridge is built, mm -hmm. that'll be the next thing's coming. The Kosciuszko Bridge is done. Uh, all the airports are being done. Uh, in my opinion, I think this governor wants to run for president, mm -hmm. and he's going to make sure these things move along. So that's uh, the strength of my report. Thank you. Can't be president yeah, when you're in jail. Well. Um, leadership Committee, Alianza. Good evening. The Leadership Committee met the OKD calendar for September <clears throat> and the agenda for this evening. Okay. Uh, Dr. Trout, Committee Development. Mike, please okay. state it. It is an open request <laughs> from the board that if any of the residents or any of the community board members have any suggestions or items that needs to be considered for community development purposes and to be included in the budget priority list, please submit them to the uh, community board office attention district manager. Thank you. Thank you, Excel. Um, education committee, by the way. There was an education committee meeting, education and youth. Mainly the talk was around the Yankee Awards for this coming year. Um, there is some language and some hashing out that has to be done so that we will not have that until the next meeting. Um, I believe the applications are due in October. We can do them in October. So, yeah, we just want to try to do them earlier rather than later versus rely on the Yankees to contact us. No, I understand that, but the, this, what things have to be hashed out first. Yes. And no, just, since we'll be closed for, for the uh, two months, the youth committee will not be meeting, so we don't have but to But if, if we can out. have some discussions in the meantime, that would probably be very helpful. Okay. Well, we'll see about that in the meantime. Uh, our education and youth will be on September 5th at 7 p.m. at the office, and uh, we'll get everything hashed out and get the information out to you as quickly as possible. Um, have a wonderful summer. Uh, Sandy, go ahead. With the minutes, then whatever the discussion was going on here dealt with the Yankee Awards. Is that with the times and the, whatever it is? It, yeah, it tells you that's that was all about the AQ awards. It not on the minutes. Okay. So, okay. All right, but that's what it was about. Okay. And thank you, uh, Joe Coke, uh, Health Committee. Yes. Good evening. Uh, at a June 13th meeting, we had the executive director from. Montefiore attending our meeting. She outlined to us some of the problems that they are having and have had. One thing she told us that they have moved the orthopedic department over to Wingfield to open up some beds at Monty. The hospital itself has 421 beds. And she told us that there's a heavy period when patients 
come into the hospital. Those days are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Those are heavy days, and they do not have beds to move patients into a room. We were lucky to have with us at the meeting Dominic there to tell the executive director who was Beverly Michaels the problem that he had when he was a patient at Ohio. Now they have not been able to open up beds in Westchester Square because the state would not let that happen. So, and they're not building any new hospitals. So we are stuck <coughs> with what we have. Now she give to us, the members of my committee, the Einstein campus update. I'm gonna leave this in the office and I hope the members of this committee visit the office and look at the information included in this update. There is a problem in terms of that. And it, didn't, it seems as if we can't solve the problem. They're not going to build any new hospitals. So we have to suffer through what we have. Uh, and I want to tell you, not only at Waller, New York Presbyterian is having the same problem. Patients are in the hallway on the gurneys. They have no beds. And they're not making any new beds. So, but I do want you to read this. She outlined quite a bit of information for us. Had patience with us, the questions we asked. One thing she did tell us, that there were 115 new nurses hired at, well, uh, I guess, at Montefiore. So that's the whole system. And one thing I learned that she said, and it reflects back to um, my wife is a former school teacher. What happens when a nurse is out? They have a office. If that person calls and says, I'm not coming in today, someone gets on the phone and calls nurses who are not in that day and call them in to come in to sub for the person who's out. Now most of us, or all of us should know that happens in the public school system. When a teacher is out, there's someone there very early in the morning when the teacher calls and said, I'm not gonna be in, that they call some substitute teacher to come in. They do the same thing at Wilder Hospital. So we have been complaining and giving Beverly and uh, a hard time in terms of the emergency room and not have nurses to cover. But she indicated to us that they do their best to call someone in to cover when a nurse is out. I, I didn't realize that until she was telling us that. It's just like the public school system, when a teacher is out and they call someone <coughs> to come in to substitute for that particular nurse. Now I'd like for the members of the committee, not only the committee, but the members of, of the board to read the minutes, it gives you an insight in terms of what Mrs. Michaels told us about happening, what is happening at Walla. 
Now that's my report. The other part of that, we have an opportunity to have a screening event and we want to have that screening event for diabetes, uh, blood pressure, HIV. We want to have this in the fall. Montefiore has some money for that kind of program. So we are going to sponsor something in the fall uh, in terms of that. But it was an educational experience for us when she went through this and explained what's happening at Wala and the number of people that come to the hospital on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I mean, this, you know, overwhelm what they have there. So there will be no new beds. Okay. Anything else, Joe? Because John Ciano had something first. And then, and then Sandy, and then Al. Okay. So, how are you doing, John? Dom? Yes, at the executive, uh, what was the executive committee we had? Leadership. Leadership committee, I brought that up. And Frano came out with the fact that eight or nine years ago, some committee got together and decided that the state of New York said that we don't need any more beds you know, in the hospitals. And everything you said is 100% true, Joe. I back you, you're 100% right. But the only way around this, because she basically says, there's no way you're getting any beds. And I don't think that that works. I think we have to get behind anybody who's an elected official for the state of New York and have somebody else do another survey to show that we do need more beds in the area of the lower New York area. You know, anything from Westchester down. I mean, you know, maybe uh, in Poughkeepsie, they, they, they're satisfied with a hospital with 300 beds. But you can't have that over here. I mean, mm -hmm. Westchester Square, you, the facility is there. All you got to do is put the beds in. I mean, they shut down Pelham Bay Hospital, you know, about 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't afford to lose anymore, and we do have to add. So I think this community board should start going after the state officials and you know get the ball rolling to get more beds. So Chad, you want to clarify that? Yeah. All you have to do is Google Burger Commission. You will see so much information in it. And the Burger Commission caused at least and I'm not probably over exaggeration, at least seventy five to hundred hospitals to close. The reason is the delivery of medicine has changed. Montefiore used to have 825 certified beds. To my knowledge, Montefiore probably has less than, no, yeah, I don't want the main column, less than 600. That's one. Also, there's Google another thing, DISRIP. This is a program by New York State mm -hmm. that a bunch of hospitals get together to provide services to the community. The purpose is the hospital will get paid for the health of their community and to discourage people from staying in a hospital setting. There's reasons for it. And the more you stay in a hospital, the better the chances of you Dying. either getting hurt from falling or getting mm -hmm. a disease out of it. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things. Dom, you could demonstrate all you want. You will not get additional beds. You're going to get less beds coming down. Okay. Uh, Sandy had something? Oh, no. What I wanted to bring up is with our screening, we are forced to use the community board office as the base where they could come in, also see what the community board does, and use the back office for a few hours, one day, to do all the screening. Okay, so we look into that. I, yeah. I, I don't know if that document's been emailed to us, but if it hasn't, maybe Mayor Wall could email to us so we can send out an email, a blast on that. Uh, Al, you wanna say something? Yeah, I don't know if anybody has seen this brochure. 
I complained to Montefiore that we had a meeting with them and they said they were going to broadcast and advertise and they were going to blanket the communities with information about where to go <laughs> for urgent care that are associated with Montefiore. Because most of the people that come into the emergency room are there for what you would get from a general, uh, general practitioner. Mm -hmm. And it uses up a lot of emergency room time and space. So I don't know. I haven't seen this before. They delivered it to me today. And they told me that they sent these all over the place. Mm -mm. Now, my community association didn't get it. Nope. All right, no one here got it. So I don't know what they did with them. But this is very, this is very inf informational. It tells you where all the urgent care centers are that are associated with Montefiore. So if you're a patient of Montefiore's and you want to stay on in their uh, computer system, you go to any one of these places that are listed and it'll go into the computer where your uh, doctor's associated with it, they're associated with the hospital. Now, I, you know, they dropped them off and said they had, they had uh, papered the community with them. Mm -mm. Uh, good, I will let them know. So Thank we'll, you. we'll follow up on that. All right, uh, Linda? <laughs> Yes, we're talking about Monty and the what they call the five families, Columbia, uh, New York Presbyterian, etc. But your city hospitals are in just as bad, if not worse, condition because with DISRIP, we're going to get hit once the Affordable Care Act dies, and it's going to eventually die. Uh, right now, they have let go fi over 500 people in the past month from all 11 hospitals. Everything now for medicine, as Fran was saying, is ambulatory care. So in other words, they want to keep you well, so you're coming in for clinic or whatever it might be, but it's not to stay in a bed. And Al, if I'm not mistaken, Jacoby went from 620 beds, we're down to 450 or 400. And they're not going to give any beds back. Like he said, it's just not going to happen because everything is turning toward ambulatory care. So they don't want you to use the emergency room unless it's a life and death thing, but there are people who don't have primary cares, so they come in for toothaches, menstrual pain, etc. And it, it just clogs up the emergency room. Not that you don't want to treat these people, but if they went to an urgent care, it wouldn't be the same as somebody coming in for an accident or a gunshot wound or something like that. But your city hospitals are 1.8, if I'm correct, million dollars down that, that we're looking at. Yeah, and yeah, we're trying to get million. Million. one million rather. Yeah, yeah. And um, they've made it for this this <laughs> fiscal year, but we don't know about 18. And the mayor promised that no unionized people would be let go, but nothing's promised to anybody. We're just glad we have jobs. But you need to be looking at Jacoby as well. Great. Um, so it's, I guess um, well, housing, housing's not here. Do we have a vote tally yet? Yeah, we have it. Okay, so let's return to, to the nominating committee. Also, Veronica or Sandy, I, <coughs> you forgot to mention that the remember, for at least those of you who've been here for a while, your votes are public at some point. They don't have to be made public tonight, but by law, they have to be made public, period. So it's nice that you fold them up, but we have to unfold them and count them, and they're going to be public anyway. So, Sandy, go ahead. Well, thank you for letting them know about the vote, because I was going to do it, but that's fine. All right. For um, the second vice chair, it was Joanne, 29. Okay. For the um, sergeant at arms, Fano, 29. 29, 29 votes. votes in favor, though. Any against? Any contentions? No, no, I'm going to get to that. That's why I saved the treasurer. There were 23 votes for Sylvia and six abstentions. And that's it. That's why I knew that there was 29 people. So there's no against, and there's only just six abstentions. They were unanimous for the sergeant. All right, so... Silvio, did you abstain? He did. <laughs> I have to look at the paper. We just. I asked yeah. them personally. Okay. Right, Thank you very much, Sandy. Um, public safety, Martin Morris. Actually, uh, public safety did it meet this month. Uh, in, in the calendar, we have the next meeting being uh, September 20th, but um, that's actually a Jewish holiday. So it's going to be changed sometime within the next two months. But that was it. Okay.
Yes, so here about is on the, the change. Uh, sanitation, Tony Cigarelli? Sanitation did not meet. I don't need to Thank you. Thank you. Uh, old business? New business. Uh, old or new? You know, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse with this topic. The building on barns, barns have you alive. Okay? It's still not being rented. Everything is locked up tight. Nobody's ever working in there. And I am personally requesting the board to find out from the owner what's going on there. You'll know, try, but I know there have been that road of the place, the last one. Exactly. Nobody's living there. The road's having a wonderful time. They're going underneath. The yes. health department did get them this past month. That went out. They got them for a different location, but not that. Okay, so, but what I would like to know is from the owner, who knows who the owner is, is that building ever going to be rented, or is it the truth that I heard that it's going to be? shelter. Mm -hmm. It's all hearsay and so further notice. Everything is hearsay, Jeremy, but this is the third or fourth time that I requested some information. I live in the area, I'm concerned. I understand, <laughs> but as you know with the SOFA properties, if they don't want to tell us what's going on, you know, I'll reach out. But at least with SOFA, there's nobody to talk to. Whether we get the right answer or not is another story. I'm not faulting anybody for this. Don't yep. misunderstand me. Yep. But we need some kind of information. Yep, we'll follow Thank up. you. Uh, Joe, is it? Joe uh, Thompson. No, I just want to make an announcement that National Night Out Against Crime will be August 1st, which is the first Tuesday in August. It's going to be a conference hall. All groups are invited to come and set up a table. So that's Mars Park, and Bronx Park East, and all the rest of the organizations. Uh, also, just to, for people who've never been there before, we do have the largest national night out in the Bronx. Usually we had it on Pelham Parkway, but uh, the commissioner feels, and rightfully so, that uh, the parkway is not a park, and it oh, does create stop. a dangerous situation for children. Oh, uh, because it's not fenced in and it's close to uh, a speedway. Yeah, we've used it as a park for Parkway. decades. So uh, we were able to get Thomas Wall. She was very pleased with that. Last year they did a tremendous job in not only providing us with equipment, but also clean up. Mm -hmm. So uh, Iris, you're right on Iris. She does a tremendous job, but she deserved the award that uh, she got. Um, so anybody who wants to, any organization, uh, except for election, anybody who wants to sign people up, you can sign people up to vote, but if you're a Democrat, you're going to have to sit with a Republican, because it cannot be just one party that you represent. Yeah, that's the way it should be. Other than that, we welcome everybody, and please get in touch with uh, Hazel Mira, what you can call me, Tell us that uh, you're confirmed. Uh, Joe McManus, Mike, please. Pass it down. I just, just as a point, uh, I, maybe I got the information wrong, but did you say that you have to have two people there? I mean, at a designated table for the 49th precinct or just anybody because it is a public park. I, I, I was confused about what you meant. I'm going to repeat it in a louder voice. Uh, Not if, louder, I need it more no, if, you, if you want to sign people up to vote in order to make it fair, if you're a Democrat, you also have someone of the Republican Party uh, that's also signing up people to register a vote. registration card. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you have to have one of each. Say it's a public park. It shouldn't have to be two people. Well, I'm afraid that's the way it's going to be, Joe. That's not. Well, it's a public park. I mean, you can't restrict people unless that's a parks department rule. 
Well, it's a police uh, situation. It's a police involvement. It's sponsored by the police department. We are agents of the police department, and these are the rules.